They sent me one of the best web cameras on the market, a Mid S800, and we're gonna do a real life test. We're gonna test the performance with natural light and with studio lights, so we can see the difference. Right here, I have MacBook Air M1, and I have the web camera connected to another laptop. So we can compare them. The first thing you can immediately see is that the field of view is very different. The MacBook has really wider field of view, but the quality is not there. I have the worst lightning situation. I have a huge window behind me, so the light shines and my face is hardly getting any light. That is the toughest lightning situation you can be in, but I wanted to start with the hardest example so you can truly see the performance. One way to improve the situation without investing any money in a web camera is to use additional light and just shine it at the wall. Like that, the light bounces back at you and the quality is dramatically improved. Let's rotate the table and see how the image will change. Chiki, 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 chiki. Now we came closer to the window and we have a side lightning. I can definitely see that Apple is doing some mambo jumbo with the shadows. You can see how much the shadows are elevated on that camera and here I'm much darker. So Apple is doing some editing magic. That picture is closer to life what you see. And now let's move to the best case scenario. We have a window just in front of us. For some reason on the MacBook I still look very very muddy. That camera has such a great light performance because it has a Sony 1 inch sensor capable of recording 4K image and the lens has an aperture of f1.8. It has a great autofocus, let's test it out. Boop. Boop. Time to test the studio lights. Here is how my professional camera sees the scene. Here we have the Emit webcam and we have the MacBook which is struggling. The image looks really washed out. To be fair, that's quite old MacBook Air. It's M1 but the web camera wasn't updated. With the new MacBooks you get much better quality but that is the average quality you get with a laptop camera. The camera has extremely precise control. It's a direct plug and play so you can use it without changing any of the settings straight out of the box the performance is amazing if you want a little bit more control you can go to the website and download the camera control here you can control the microphone noise reduction highly recommend you to be turned on you can flip the image you have an hdr option you can see the difference so hdr on hdr off you can see a little bit more from the scenery outside with the HDR on. With the HDR I had an interesting issue. The camera came with USB-A to USB-C cable and all my MacBooks have only USB-C to USB-C. I don't like using an adapter. So I connected the camera with a simple USB-C to USB-C. So the good news is that the camera works with any cable, USB-C or USB-A, but the HDR functionality requires you higher speeds and it will not work with any cable. You need a really fast USB 3.1 cable. You can add grid lines which can be extremely helpful if you use the camera as a second device. Here you can control the exposure. At the moment it's set to prioritize faces. You can also do a global metering. And now the camera tries to compensate the highlights if I move away, you can see that the highlights are not burnt anymore. But for me, the best is face metering. I prefer my face to be nice and bright. For the focusing, the central area focus is ideal if you're reviewing products. So you can grab the product, put it in front of the camera and it will focus it immediately. Most of the time, I'll keep the camera on the face focus. You have a manual focusing and you have a zoom. And here is a very important one, anti-flickering. When you're in Europe, 50 Hz. If you're in USA, 60 Hz. Otherwise, the lights will be blinking in the background. And next, we have the filters. The controls are like in Photoshop. You can control the contrast, sharpness, saturation, and the tone. 
The camera can be mounted in two ways. You can use the bottom quarter screw hole to mount it to any kind of tripod or you can attach it directly to the monitor. Just like this. You can rotate it up, down, left and right. And the best feature in my opinion, when you don't use the camera, just rotate the top part and you have blinders. Perfect security. I hope the review was interesting. See you in the next episode. Bye.